This is the team for this project. And uh, title has been slightly changed from what you saw originally in the program, simply because uh, each co-author has his own point of view of project. Unfortunately, Alexei could not come. So I <laughs> will tell you about our recent results. And then Dennis Schimmel uh, is a PhD student uh, from our group in Munich. As uh, Volodya Yudson mentioned yesterday, indeed, the main idea of this project appeared after careful reading this paper uh, and numerous discussions with authors, including, of course, Boris Alshuler. So uh, I will very, very briefly summarize what um, was the main point of uh, Volodya's yesterday talk. <laughs> uh, I will address one-dimensional systems. And uh, we all know um, that transport in one-dimensional systems with or without interactions is carried by collective charge density waves, which propagate uh, ballistically uh, in ideal systems, which are clean. But if you add disorder, it can easily pin charge density wave, and it can uh, drive a system to insulator. And the question uh, is, uh, what are exceptions from this general picture? The exception which Volodya explained yesterday is related uh, to edge transport in two-dimensional time reversal symmetric topological insulators, where uh, there are so-called helical edge modes, where chirality is locked with spin. So right move has spin up, left move has spin down. And as a four, uh, if you put potential scatter, it is unable uh, to mix these two modes, simply because of spin conservation. So there is no backscattering from right, mode, uh, right moving mode to the left one. And uh, we hope that uh, conductance can, uh, is immune to localization effects and can remain ideal, at least up to some extent. And the question we addressed is, uh, can we expect other uh, setups uh, where a symmetry protected transport with suppressed backscattering can appear in purely one dimensional systems without uh, presence of topologically non trivial bulk? This question I will address. I will take uh, the model of Conda chain, exp explain physics of Conda chain and preferent regimes in this uh, model. I will explain you how we derive a low energy uh, effective theory for, for it uh, with uh, quantum phase transition, where discrete symmetry is spontaneously broken. And uh, at the end, I will address the properties of these two phases separated by quantum phase transition. Let me start with the model. The Conda chain uh, is very well known. We have band electrons. Uh, which interact with uh, local magnetic moments. So I have uh, exchange interactions. There are many reviews of, about this model. Uh, I will study this model under the following assumptions. Uh, coupling is uh, anisotropic. It is of X, X, Z type. And it is weak. Uh, spin multiplied by any coupling constant must be much smaller than the band width of conduction electrons. Must be much smaller than the ultraviolet cutoff of the theory. <laughs> I will further assume that uh, band is far from half filling. Uh, the array is dense, and uh, I will talk uh, mainly about zero temperature limit. Okay, uh, my goal is to develop effective low energy theory. And to start with, uh, I, I might as well go to a continuum limit. So first of all, uh, I uh, change from fermionic operators to smooth chiral modes, right moving particle with spin either up or down, and left moving particle with any spin. This is absolutely standard. We end up with uh, uh, two uh, direct particles, right moving particle with plus Fermi velocity, left moving particle with minus Fermi velocity. And uh, this is well known Lagrangian of band electrons, where the first matrix X in spin space and the second uh, in chiral one. OK, now um, let me analyze most relevant terms in spin local moment interactions. There are two types of such terms. Uh, the first 
is related with forward scattering accompanied by spin flip. It is nothing else but origin of quantum physics, as you know. Uh, the second type of rele most relevant terms is related to backscattering. Here I collected all terms. Uh, and backscattering uh, can also be uh, accompanied by spin flip, or it can occur without spin flip. And you see that I have put two different coupling constants for these two different backscattering terms. Now I have to say some, or to assume something, something about spin configuration, and uh, let me at first assume that uh, spin variables are slow, as it was done uh, many years ago in well-known paper. Uh, what I have after this? Uh, all backscattering terms uh, in the Hamiltonian are multiplied by uh, oscillating exponential. <coughs> Under my assumption that spins are slow, this exponential is uh, very fast. So it effectively suppresses this term, and we are left with four scattering spin flip, nothing else but quantum physics. Uh, but in principle, uh, there is no guarantee that other spin configurations are absent, and uh, I may consider uh, the case where spins have two K Fermi components. After proper choice of spin configuration, uh, I uh, simply uh, put these fast oscillations into spins. Effectively, they reappear in quantum term, such that quantum term becomes suppressed, and backscattering term dominates. Backscattering can open the gap, <coughs> so this is the regime of gap physics, which I will address. <coughs> uh, the gap physics may dominate, for example, when spin is large and uh, there is no quantum at all. Or uh, I can switch on additional electron-electron interactions, repulsions, and uh, if uh, interactions uh, uh, are almost SU2 invariant, then the first loop of the RG will tell you that the backscattering dominates. So there are such cases where this is the main term, and I'm going to address uh, this physics right now. Uh, so, I expect opening the gap in fermionic spectrum, and after this, I have scale separation in the system. There are three scales uh, in space. Uh, the smaller scale is related with uh, 2K Fermi oscillations, which I'm going to eliminate uh, at first. Then, after gap is opened, uh, a coherence lens appears, and there are uh, two other regions. Uh, gapped fermions live in s at smaller scales. And uh, this is a region of uh, low energy physics, which is my goal. Uh, I expect that maybe remaining massless fermions and slow spin components live here. And as you will see, uh, these two regions may be coupled by uh, massive uh, fluctuations of spin degree of freedom. Now, uh, necessarily, so I have already singled out uh, smooth <coughs> electrons degrees of freedom. Now I have uh, to uh, separate uh, scales in spins. I may start with usual, usual parameterization of spin by uh, S2 vector on, on the three dimensional sphere. <laughs> and uh, let this uh, be one of vectors of orthonormal basis. Then I will do the following trick. I uh, rotate spin, introducing uh, two components, uh, longitudinal and transverse components of new spin, uh, and uh, they are characterized by two new angles, uh, which I call alpha parallel and alpha perpendicular. Next, I say that let me duplicate variables, namely, in addition to these two initial angles, I allow uh, two new alpha variables uh, to be dynamical degrees of freedom. So I will treat them as independent variables. And I assume uh, that I will be able to single out the fastest oscillations uh, in spin degree of freedom by decomposition, saying that alpha perpendicular consists of 2K Fermi oscillations plus some smooth component. What happens now? I have four spin degrees of freedom instead of initial two, 
And of course, this is possible if and only if uh, I end up with separation of variables. So at the end, you will see that alpha and psi will be slow vari spin variables, and alpha parallel and theta will be massive spin variables. So nothing bad with this uh, duplication of variables. It's just the way how to separate degrees of freedom. OK, uh, now I write down full backscattering term, my basic equation with which I will play further and further. I uh, remind you that uh, there are two different uh, types of backscattering, uh, without spin flip and with spin flip, with two different uh, coupling constants. <coughs> and uh, after I did shift of uh, perpendicular alpha variable, uh, fast oscillations simply disappear. I have included them in alpha. So what remains here already contains no 2K Fermi oscillations. Uh, now what I expect, uh, backscattering must open the gap. In respect of fermions, after opening the gap, I effectively decrease energy of fermions. And uh, the ground state energy uh, is minimized when the gap is maximized. So I must find spin configuration, which allows me to maximize different backscattering terms. <laughs> and uh, you see that uh, this effective spin requires that alpha parallel must be close to zero. And depending on which term dominates, I can have uh, three options for theta variable. It must be close either to zero or to pi or to pi over two. And uh, which uh, minima is realized depends on ratio of two coupling constants. Let me start with the so-called case of easy axis anisotropy, when that component uh, of uh, coupling is much, much larger than perpendicular one. <coughs> uh, so uh, the term uh, without spin flip dominates. And uh, as far as it links uh, all uh, uh, fermions, uh, to each, uh, it, it hybridizes all fermions uh, from ref, left to right and vice versa. It can open uh, gaps in spectrum of all Dirac fermions. Uh, I expect that this term dominates. So uh, alpha is 0. It will be always 0. And this term requires uh, theta to be close to pi over 2. Next, I have to do uh, some technical steps, which I will not explain. I will just list them. Uh, I do gauge transformation uh, to gauge out uh, remaining uh, phases from backscattering. I calculate fermionic gap. I integrate out massive fermions, which appear to be mass massive uh, due to backscattering. And finally, I integrate out uh, remaining massive fluctuations uh, of spin phases. Uh, to take into account uh, renormalizations of uh, parameters of my new collective degrees of freedom. So assume that gauge transformation is done. Uh, this is a fermionic gap, which uh, comes uh, simply from 4 by 4 matrix. Uh, gaps determine fermionic contribution to ground state energy. Uh, it is this minus sign, so the larger is the gap. Uh, ground state. Ground state. Uh, the larger the gap is, uh, lower ground state energy is. And uh, from this cartoon, you see that minimum of this contribution is indeed achieved at theta being close to pi over 2. Further, I can tailor expand uh, ground state energy around this minima. And uh, you see that fluctuations of theta and alpha parallel are suppressed. So indeed, those uh, two are massive spin variables, as I expected in the very beginning. My approach has been preliminary justified. Now I integrate uh, over all massive modes, massive fermions, massive spin fluctuations, and I end up with effective low energy theory for the case of easy axis anisotropy. There are two contributions here. Both are of type of Lattinger liquid. LL stands for Lattinger liquid. And uh, you see that there is a pronounced uh, spin charge separation. I have spin density wave, which propagates uh, with bare velocity, Fermi velocity. And I have charge density wave, uh, which propagates with uh, velocity being much, much smaller than bare velocity. Correspondingly, compressibility of charge density wave, the Lattinger parameter, is also small. Uh, the physics of this renormalization of parameters for charge density wave 
is very simple. Volody explained it yesterday, I can briefly repeat. Uh, spin phase uh, can rotate freely. I don't know how to draw it better, but the main uh, thing is uh, that uh, spin-ons uh, feel presence of localized electrons. And because of this coupling, uh, charge density waves uh, become slow. This uh, is the same picture as uh, Volody explained yesterday. Uh, as concerns uh, configuration of spin waves, uh, we have a spin oscillations both in x and y directions, but if I calculate uh, cross correlation functions, I see that x and y components are not correlated to each other. <coughs> now, let me add uh, potential disorder and uh, study stability of charge density wave with respect to this potential disorder, <coughs> which has no spin structure and the four uh, it links uh, only particles with the same spin. Uh, fermions which stand here are all gapped fermions. Uh, I would like to uh, study property of charge density wave described by alpha. So I integrate out massive fermions. And after this, I uh, end up with sine Gordon model for alpha. Now I recall uh, that Lattinger parameter for alpha degree of freedom is small. Therefore, certainly uh, this term uh, is relevant and uh, disorder can pin charge density wave very, very similar to how it happens in usual one-dimensional wires. We come across usual uh, Anderson insulator. So uh, ch this charge density wave is unstable with, uh, with, respect, uh, with respect to additional added potential disorder. Now, um, I would like uh, to study the opposite regime uh, where uh, J perpendicular dominates. I remind you uh, equation for the fermionic gap in easy axis case. And I ask myself a question, what happens uh, with this expression uh, at the SU2 symmetric point where two carbon constants uh, become uh, semi-equal to each other? If two constants are equal, then uh, cosine quadrat plus sine quadrat is one. So uh, for m minus term, square root exactly cancels j perpendicular. And I see that some gaps go to zero at the SU2 symmetric point. Now uh, I can assume that probably if I go further, to the case where uh, J perpendicular dominate, only Z gap survives. And uh, if M minus shrinks to zero, it will remain zero uh, in the uh, second spin. Easy axis is a plane. Easy axis is a plane. Easy axis is a case where JZ dominate and vice versa. So uh, my guess is that this point will be a point of uh, quantum phase transition, which <coughs> uh, will separate uh, two different phases. Uh, to simplify my life, I say that let me consider the case where uh, JZ uh, goes to zero. Uh, this is the same uh, equation for backscattering term, but now uh, I cross out uh, backscattering without spin flip. And I can see the backscattering all with only spin flip. Uh, sigma minus and sigma plus tell me uh, that here there are uh, two uh, contributions which uh, can be rewritten as helical contributions to backscattering. Again, I, I recall you, remind you of as helical modes are modes where, uh, helicity is where um, direction of propagation is uh, locked with spin. Uh, this is taken from cosine. And uh, if this term dominates in this limit, uh, then as usually alpha parallel is zero. And uh, I must maximize cosine to open uh, gap as large as possible. So I expect theta to be zero. Uh, there is second contribution, which comes from the sine. And the only, the only difference is that uh, as far as uh, I have a sign here, then theta must be close to pi, not to zero. So uh, I 
calculate ground state energy, uh, fermionic contribution to ground state energy in the uh, easy plane configuration. And I see that there, uh, there are two degenerate minima with theta being close to zero and theta being close to pi. And uh, depending on uh, which configuration system uh, chooses, I can open gap in one or other helical sector. The second sec helical sector remaining gapless. Uh, this is the same uh, situation which I redraw in uh, chiral representation. So you see that uh, for one spin, right moment particle is gapless, left moment particle is gapped, and vice versa for second configuration. Uh, we can say that there is uh, partial gap opening in the system. Instead of uh, gap four gaps in all branches of, of uh, chiral fermions, now I have only two gaps. Uh, again, I must uh, verify uh, scale separation. Uh, I choose some minima. Uh, I calculate fluctuations of spin variables around this minima. I see the fluctuations are gapped and suppressed. So everything is self-consistent. Uh, I have two massive spin variables as expected. I can go ahead. I can uh, integrate out all massive degrees of freedom. But now the situation is drastically different from what you saw before. <coughs> I have two uh, different charge carriers, uh, free helical fermions, which are gapless, and collective wave, uh, which is now coupled to everything to uh, charge and to spin, so I can call it uh, spin, uh, charge spin density wave. Uh, free helical fermions, of course, propagate with bare velocity, fermi velocity, and uh, collective wave uh, is again slow because of same reasons I explained yesterday, a kind of polaronic effects. Uh, the principal difference between these two phases is also reflected in uh, spin correlations because if uh, now I uh, calculate correlation between Sx and Sy spin components, I uh, see that there is local helical order. Uh, and uh, this local helical order reflects uh, broken helical symmetry. Uh, similar uh, effects uh, were also addressed in talk by Daniel lost one week ago, Daniel lost uh, one week ago now I am interested in the question uh, whether um, after breaking helical symmetry the system can acquire some robustness uh, again localization effect whether we may expect backscattering uh, to be suppressed so I uh, add again uh, weak scalar disorder uh, which has no spin structure and uh, I see that uh, disorder uh, is able uh, formally uh, link uh, only gapped and gapless fermions. But matrix element uh, of single particle backscattering would be zero, simply because there is no density of state uh, inside of the gap of gapped uh, particle. So first conclusion is that uh, single particle backscattering is impossible if I assume spin conservation in the system. Uh, then I do the same uh, as uh, for the case of uh, easy axis. I integrate out uh, gapped fermions. After this, uh, I obtain effective uh, backscattering, which is multi-particle backscattering. You see that I have more fermions. Those are massive fermions. Uh, external are mass uh, massless fermions. And uh, you see that there is spin flip, which is hidden inside of a propagator of massive fermions, because the gap is opened uh, by uh, scattering with spin flip. Uh, I have no full uh, theory uh, for effect of this big scattering of my uh, in my hands, but uh, for simplest estimates, I can do the following trick. Uh, let me uh, put expectation value for this exponential uh, and ask uh, whether such uh, multi-particle effects uh, can be strong. Uh, we think no, because this exponential uh, is always either vanishing or small. And therefore, we see that uh, 
not only single particle backscattering uh, is absent, but multi-particle backscattering is also suppressed. And this is uh, very similar to suppression of backscattering uh, in time reverse invariant topological ins insulators, though I uh, emphasize that I obtain it due to interaction effects instead of presence of topologically non-trivial bulk. Uh, chairman advises that my time is almost over, so these are my conclusions. I have explained to you that uh, quantum chain uh, may show quantum phase transition uh, depending on anisotropy in the system. In the case of easy plane anisotropy, uh, helical symmetry is spontaneously broken, and uh, this may lead to noticeable suppression of backscattering, which is very, very similar to suppression in edge in transport of topological insulators. Uh, these are questions which we plan to address further. Uh, we still have uh, to explore better robustness of this uh, absence of backscattering in the, uh, deep in the infrared limit. And we still uh, do not have a full theory of phase transition in the system. Okay, and I see Boris came. So the main conclusion is that on behalf of all speakers, organizers, happy birthday, Boris. <laughs>